Last weekend, Lucinda and I took Heath and his prostitute on a double date to see This is the End, which actually did me the favor of not sucking for the 13 and a half bucks I dumped on it. The movie's basically Pineapple Express meets Left Behind, and if those references don't do it for you, it's a movie about Seth Rogen and his buddies smoking pot during the apocalypse. And it's actually a pretty safe bet, by the way, that if you made it this far into an episode of our show, you'd probably like it. It consists of a half dozen Judd Apatow acolytes playing parody versions of themselves at a housewarming party when suddenly the end times cometh, the good Christians ride to heaven on a blue light, and the folks that are left over, including all the pot-smoking, self-absorbed actors, are tormented by demons and Danny McBride's sperm. And as hard as this movie tries not to make you think, I couldn't help it. After spending an hour and a half laughing about Jonah Hill's exorcism scene, I started reflecting on the petty vengeance that underlies so much of modern Christian mythology. Now, in its lightest form, it comes across in primetime TV shows where, let's say, an atheist and a theist team up to fight both crime and their mounting sexual tension. Now, if at some point in an episode they debate the existence of God, nine times out of ten it's going to end with the atheist being shown some perplexing oddity that may or may not be a sign from God. After all, how else could that present have gotten under the tree or whatever? Now, shit like this doesn't happen in real life, because in real life there's no God, but what does that matter to some hack TV writer? Why not throw 75% of your audience a bone and end on the maybe-there's-a-God-after-all cliffhanger? But in the extreme, it turns into that torture porn rapture crap, that left-behind shit, that despite all the evidence to the contrary, the nut jibes were right all along, and everybody but us good Christian gets ass-raped by thorny devil cocks deathgasm fantasy crap. For me, it's easy to understand the appeal here. Now, it's got to be really hard for religious people to ignore the way science keeps being right all the time. You know, science keeps pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, and then they back the shit up with large hadron colliders, iPads, and missions to Pluto. And all the time they keep saying, oh, by the way, the God stuff is silly, knock it off. Now imagine how appealing it must be to step out of the real world where you never get to be right and God never sends a sign, and step into a dream world where you're right and you can rub the scientists' faces and just how wrong they've been. So Christians create these elaborate fantasies where they get the post-mortem last laugh and all of us non-believers that made fun of Jesus and owned them on Twitter have to cower under Satan's 45-foot lava cock for a couple months while they get, you know, blown by 72 virgins or whatever Christians get instead of that. Now this obsession with the apocalypse is a relatively new thing in Christian culture. Revelations has been there the whole while, of course, and virtually every Christian from the apostles down thought they were living in the time of the second coming. But this infatuation with the literal eight-headed dragon and hell on earth and the coming of the Antichrist is distinct distinctly contemporary. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the clearer it becomes that the tenets of Christianity are verifiably false, the more obsessed they get with creating some parallel universe where they can ignore all these damn facts that conflict with their faith. The end result is that they read about heretics getting tortured and the sinful earth being destroyed as a guilty pleasure. Now, as disturbing as this is, I think it's actually a good sign for the secular movement as a whole. You know, if kids didn't get bullied, none of them would dream of being the Hulk. If kids could spin webs, they wouldn't give a fuck about Spider-Man. If my wife was a pair of six-foot Swedish bisexual contortionists, I wouldn't need porn. And if God was real, you wouldn't need fictional accounts of his intervention in the affairs of humans. I like to think of this as one of the most desperate defense mechanisms of Daryl Ray's God virus. Once it loses its ability to justify itself intellectually, or even fully compartmentalize itself, the virus turns to fear in hopes of frightening the mind into submission with images of the inevitable torment and suffering awaiting all the non-believers. And as I reflected on all this, I started to wonder about all those Christians who like to threaten atheists with hell. We laugh at them and we mock them for not understanding that one can't be afraid of something one doesn't believe in, but maybe we've had it wrong the whole time. Maybe they were never trying to scare anyone but themselves.